You're no more than what you think you are. So this is the last leg, and we're going to talk about this a little bit, about the last leg of Jesus' mission. See, most people think that Jesus' mission was only on earth. But that's not the, the total reason why he came. Earlier, we took you to Genesis, if you remember, and we talked about the seed of woman. Amen. And Jesus was the seed of woman. Yes. All right. He's the only man who was born of a woman and not a man. He was quickened by the Holy Spirit and the Father. All right. So, if you took Jesus say, me and my Father are one. When you see me, you see him. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, Jesus looked like a man. Yes. Walked like a man. Yes. Talked like a man and ate like a man. But he saved like a God. Yes. Because it wasn't never man. He came as a man. See, there's some trickeration here. Watch this. When the devil fooled Adam and Eve, when he tricked them, there's a law that says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Yes. Whatsoever an angel soweth, that shall he also reap. So this angel tricked Adam and Eve. Amen? Now it's time for him to get tricked. He tricked them at a tree. Isn't that right? Well, Jesus tricked them at a tree. Because see, that cross he was on was a tree. Y'all with me? That was a tree. So the devil didn't know that Jesus was God. He didn't know that. Out of all the healing that Jesus did as he went through the communities and the areas and the regions, healing people, every now and then a devil would pop up. And Jesus would tell him to shut up. I mean, Jesus muzzled that devil and that sent that devil to the deep, the pit. So that devil never got a chance to go back and tell Satan what was going on. So Satan didn't know who Jesus was. See, he tried to find out out in the desert when Jesus was being tempted 40 days. Ask him all them questions and Ask him to jump off and, and I give you part of my kingdom and all that. And Jesus told him, no, 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 no. It's all about God. It ain't about you. Amen. It's about every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Amen. So get behind me, Satan. And Jesus went on with his ministry. Yeah. Amen. So he, 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 as I told you before, book Mark and John, we find out that Jesus healed multitudes of people. Yeah. Yes. Multitudes. And the book said uh, all in the neighborhood areas of Galilee, all in Capernaum, all in those areas, they brought all of their sick and their maimed and their many ill. They brought it to Jesus and he healed them all. See, that's part of his mission All right. was to come to heal up what? The broken heart. Isn't that what he said? Uh -huh. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, for he has called me to preach the gospel. Yes. Isaiah 61 and Luke 4. You find that if you want to go read it. Amen. So he has called me to heal up the broken heart. And then watch this. And to preach liberty to the captives. Now the question is, who were the captives he talking about? Was he talking about the local prison? No. Some people think that, but that's not what Jesus was talking about. See, when Adam died and Eve, when they obeyed Satan, 
then Satan was in control of the earth. God had given it to Adam yeah. and told him to tend the garden, but don't eat from that tree. Good and evil, and they ate from it. Then they got kicked out of the garden. And they would fail to earth. Amen. So uh, that's where it started, right there. So everybody that died from Adam on, when they died, their spirit was given to Satan. And Satan put them in prison, in darkness. Amen. So now we know who the captives were. All right. All right. The captives were everybody from Adam and Eve coming forward to Jesus. They were all in darkness. Yeah. Amen. Now, not in hell, they were in darkness, in prison. Because they were under the auspices of Satan. So then, Jesus had to come to redeem them. Yes. Redeem means to buy back. Mm -hmm. Amen. That which was taken. All right. So if a man was taken captive by some, not captive, but if a man was a slave to another man, every seven years, he had to give that man a chance to be redeemed, to be bought. By his way out of sleep. But then seven times seven is 49 and 50 is called the year of what? Jubilee. Jubilee is when the same thing. You have to give that relative a chance to be bought. So Jesus came to redeem Adam. And he, that's why Paul called him the second Adam. Paul referred to and that's why he called him the second Adam. Let me explain that to you. Adam was created by who? God. Everybody after Adam came out of Adam and Eve. That's right. Is that right? That's right. So Adam had to have a relative, a blood relative, that would come and sacrifice himself to get him out of prison. Does that get a little clear to you? Do I know what I'm trying to say? That so that was Jesus' job. Why was Jesus related to Adam? Well, Adam was created by God. And then who was Jesus created by? God. So that made Adam and Jesus relatives. Because they both had the same father. So only Jesus could come and redeem Adam and Eve. See, that's what this is all about. So you got to read that in Genesis 3.15 where he told the serpent that the seed of woman would crush his head. And, 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 and the serpent would, would bruise uh, Jesus' heel, which was the crucifixion. See, so everybody thought when Jesus died, that was the end of his mission. Right. No, that's coming up part two of his mission. Now, let's look at this again, where he says, Christ, all, verse 18, Christ also suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Yes. That's what I'm talking about today. Yes. He wanted to get Adam to bring him out of prison and bring him to God. In other words, take paradise out of the ground and put it up in the heavens. Alright, now it says here, verse 18, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Quicken means make a lie. So we got that. Then verse 19 says, By which alive he went down into and preached unto the spirits in prison. 
So Jesus had a prison ministry. Amen. He had a prison ministry. Because that's where all his people were. Coming from Adam forth. And that's why God sent him to die for the world so that he could free up all of those people that died after Adam. He got them all. And the book says he got them all. Watch this. Verse 20 says uh, the people in the spirits in prison which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing where the few would be saved. So he got all of them people. He didn't leave nobody there. He cleaned the prison out. Amen. And then brought them to God. Yes. That's what we really celebrate. The fact that he went and got out of and took him out of prison. He was there for thousands of years in the dark. Couldn't see each other. But then Psalm uh, 24 says, lift up the gates. When Christ got down there, Psalm 24 is talking about the descent into the prison area. Listen to what it says. Now this is Paul, excuse me, David writing this. God showed David this, what, 800,000 years before it happened. <clears throat> When he descended, Psalm 24 said he descended and told the gates. He didn't talk to the gods. He said, lift up ye gates and be lifted up ye everlasting doors for the Son of glory shall come in. Yeah, that's it. Now, I read what Bishop, and this is Paul the Bishop. He said Jesus was laying in the grave sad to eat and rest. A bishop in the Catholic Church wrote this that Jesus was laying in the grave resting on Saturday. <laughs> and that ain't true. Let me explain something to you. See, you've got to deal with the time of Hebrew time, not our time. Our days change at midnight, right? But the Hebrew days change at 6 o'clock in the evening. From 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. the next day makes one day. So that's why they had to hurry up and get Jesus off the cross. Jesus died at 3 o'clock. Three more hours would have been 6 o'clock, which means that would have been the Passover. So the law of the Hebrew Dead bodies can't hang on the cross during these holidays. So Jesus, they begged Pilate to get the body. Joseph did. And he got the body. Amen. And he put the body in the tomb. And as soon as they rolled the door, Jesus got up. He got up. Now, I don't know, anybody seen the passion in him? You should see that. You should take time to look at the passion of Christ. Because it is more real than all them other stories. See, Jesus got beat beyond recognition. Beyond recognition. And the passion is the only one to show you that. All them other ones, because I watched three of them over the weekend. Amen. And Jesus had a little blood right here. You know, little blood over here. You know what I mean? His face was clean, his body was clean. But the passion, they showed the way they beat Jesus inside out. And then and, and he had whips and stripes and blood all over his body. And he never said one word. All right. All right. And that made the whippers really mad. You know how they be going to get your child a whooping and they don't cry? You keep whooping, don't you? Yeah. 
Let's oh, keep whooping till you get some nards. <laughs> well, them guys that was beating Jesus, they almost fell out. After they got, got to whooping Jesus, Jesus got up and carried the cross. You don't know, hear me? Jesus was the strong man. We're not weak by him. He was a strong man. He took every pain they put on him and didn't cry about it because that is the reason he came to the earth. He saved himself. I'm all excited and stuff, but what, 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 what? This is what I come here for. This is what I was born to do this. See, now this is just me. I think Jesus, when he was in the garden, that the devil was in there watching Jesus. Because he was trying to find out if Jesus, who Jesus really was. He thought Jesus was just a prophet. So he was watching Jesus. And everything Jesus did, the devil was watching. Because he wasn't sure who Jesus was. See, Jesus has the ability to block your mind <laughs> where you can't think the way you would normally think. Just like them demons cried out and he shut them up and put a muzzle on them and sent them away. See, Jesus had that power. Yes. And everybody act like they want to know he blocked them out. And so nothing would come between him and what he had to do. He came to redeem us, to buy us back, and bring us to God. Yes. Now that's what yes. Jesus was really yes. all about. Yes. Amen. It wasn't just the cross. The cross was part of it. After the cross, he had to go down and preach. Three days and three nights, Jesus preached on the Passover. He told them you must be born again. That's what I'm saying. You know, I don't know what he said, but I, I'm sure he said the same thing to those in prison that he said to us on earth. That you must be born again. I'm sure he probably said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come Set free. 
Amen. So I wanted to give you this side of his ministry. I've never heard no preacher give it to me before. But that's the other side of his ministry. That's what he come to get out of. And he and all them people, Abraham and Isaac and, and Jacob, he called all of their names and they got up and got in line. <laughs> As he carried them out. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's all I got to say this morning. All right. I wanted you to see that side of it. Yeah. You know, we all talk about how he died on the cross, how they beat him, blah, 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 blah. But nobody talks about this other side of his ministry. Amen. How he going to be laying in the grave on Sandy when he had a preaching uh, uh, engagement in prison? Uh -huh. All right. So you got to be proactive about what you believe. Yeah. Because yeah. folks out here telling lies. There's no way that he could die on Friday, get up on Sunday morning, and be in down in prison three days and three nights. He said it, didn't he? Somebody asked Jesus, said, Master, show us a sign. And Jesus said, the only sign you're going to get from me is that Noah, as Noah, as Jonah, was in the well three days and three nights 72 hours, that's the only sign that you get. So shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. Now I know Jesus can count. He said 72 hours. 50 hours, 60 hours. No, that ain't 72. So we, we got to get it right. Because Jesus said, and I'm going to sit down. He says, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And there's a prerequisite to that. You got to know the truth. And to know the truth, you got to study the book for yourself. Don't be lazy and let somebody else tell you, and they be telling you wrong. Because it ain't the truth. If he didn't one down there three days and three nights, that ain't the truth. Anything other than that, and I don't care who said it, it's a lie. And the devil don't want you to do that with a lie a little bit. He just wants you to lie. He tried to get Jesus to do that when he was out there being tempted. Took him up on a high place and say, well, you know it's written. And uh, you know, you won't dash your feet against the stone, so let me see you jump down and prove who you are. Jesus wouldn't prove who. Jesus told him, get behind me, Satan. Right. And <laughs> went on about his business. And many times that's what we need to do. Yeah. When he come at you, get behind me, Satan. Yes. And put in the name of Jesus on me. Right. You gotta put the name of Jesus on me. Amen. Because that devil ain't going to listen to you. But he will listen to Jesus. And he will Amen. listen to Jesus' word. Yes. Amen. Amen. So I hope that I got a word to you today. Yes. yes. You know, Amen. Lord laid it on my heart that it's important to tell his people the truth. Yes. You know, you ain't going to hear this. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to already tell you. You can go turn on the television and the radio and listen to all of them guys. And most of them going to tell you he died Friday and got up Sunday to keep in with the Catholic Church. See, that come from the Catholic Church. I ain't knocking the church, but I'm saying that's where they come from. Why? Because them Jews found out they make money on Friday. You don't hear me. Same thing with, 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 with uh, uh, Christmas. Christmas used to be a pagan holiday in 1800 here in these countries. It was against the law. But why did they go forth with it? They money, honey. They buy and make lots of money telling these lies. You know, they have folk going out buying eggs and stuff. Whole chicken can't lay it fast enough. 
Yeah. And the rabbit making love to the chicken. Come on, man. And coming up with an egg. Come on. <laughs> See, all of that came from uh, 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 pagan worshipers. See, the egg represents fertility. And so did the chicken. <clears throat> and the rabbit. I don't know what the rabbit represents. <laughs> but don't go for it. <laughs> if you eat it, just know what you eat. It ain't got nothing to do with God. Amen. Amen. Did you get a word? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Then I'm going to put it. Y'all got a word in my face. Amen. But I hope that you see this. I want you to see it in your mind. He had twofold mission. On earth and in earth. Because that's where Adam and them was. And God loved Adam. Yes. And Eve. And that's why he sent his only begotten son. Which means that's the only had one son. And that one son come out of him. Jesus. The Christ. God bless you. God bless you. At the cross. At the cross.